again. Ah! I did not just get shot! Blood, so much blood! Thus begins the journey of our two heroes, Paul and Jamie. In the midst of the grand battle of Cane Hill, these two not-so-brave soldiers, one of them wounded, became separated from their battalion and find themselves lost and alone in the woods of northern Arkansas. Have to rest. You don't need to carry me, you know. I was shot in the arm, not the leg. Earlier you said you weren't shot. True, but then why were you carrying me in the first place? You were bleeding. But you're scared of blood. True. Yeah! Sorry. Well, since I'm already on the ground, why don't we take a break? I wish we had something to eat. Okay, but I'm so thirsty. I would rather have something to drink. <gasps> what was that? Do trees have eyes? No. Um, run! I'm not scared! <gasps> Our heroes rush through the forest fleeing the snarling dog at their heels, who could not wait to feast on the flesh of the wounded. Sorry, got a little carried away there. Soon, they come upon a clearing, a large barn looming ahead of them. cow in here. Yes, there is. What should we do with it? Seal it and eat it? Yes, I am not starving! So, our heroes begin to steal the cow, dragging it out of the barn. Just then, one of the two owners of the small home comes in to check on the animal. Ah! Sister, sister, I think someone trying to steal our cow moo. I'm not stealing this cow. What are you doing stealing from my barn? I'm not stealing this cow. I'm not a woman. What? No one asked if you were a woman. My dear people, why do you want to steal our cow? Uh, because we're starving. Sister, what's going on here? My dear Margaret, these people are trying to steal our cow, but they think it's okay, so let's hear what they have to say, yeah. Let's kill them now. I don't want to die. No one's going to die. Not on my watch. Ugh, fine. But what on earth are we going to do with them? They tried to steal our stinking cow. Well, I think they could be useful. This long war has taken its toll. All right. I think I know what to do with these two. Now, the story can begin with our hero, Paul, the cowardly soldier, on the porch of the sister's house. He discusses the deal they make, trying to both stay alive in this strange territory and seek care for his wounded comrade. If I had my way, you'd be dead now. Well, thanks for not killing me. Both of you, I forgot to take your weapons. I don't feel comfortable with that. Do it now. You too, sister. Hand them over. Ugh, here. And the other one. Here. And the other one. Here. And the other one. Here. And don't forget the one that's in your shoe. Do I have to? Yeah, Paul, now it's your turn. She's more violent than most of the other soldiers I've seen. Okay, let's not draw this out any longer so we don't keep Jamie waiting here. I'm not bleeding. I have to go now. So, down to business. What do we have to do? Jamie is in no condition to travel and we couldn't find our way home anyway. My sister said, well, saying, that we could let you stay if you worked on our farm. All our slaves are gone. The land is starting to die. My idea was to string you up by your toes and laugh at you, but her idea was more practical. We're never going to get back, are we? 
Can't have you running back to come fighting our own soldiers, now can we? To be fair, this whole thing doesn't seem quite right anyway. After all, we've been through, well, it just seems that this whole war just started because people couldn't find a way to settle their problems by talking. Wise words, but it was your own side who started it. Now, shall we move on to our wounded soldier girl, the dear Jamie? Within the house, there is much to be discussed, and much pain to be had. I'm not in pain! Just stay still so I can hit you with this frying pan. No! But this is gonna hurt so much. I'm not in pain! Get ready to hurt, girl, because I have to treat this wound. Just get it over with. I hear pain. Get out, sister. There are private things happening here. Do you ever stop singing? It's obnoxious. I'll stay and watch the pain if I want to stay and watch the pain. I'm not in pain here. If you stay, I'll break a knife. No, not my knives. I'll kill you first, but I will go. Thank you, but you can't kill me if all your weapons are in my safe. I don't need my weapons to kill you. I have need- Enough! Jamie needs help. Then, the two sisters decided to make up so that the slowly dying Jamie could receive the medical care she needed. I'm not a woman. Now, Jamie, please stay on the table. Sorry, but I don't want to bloody the beds. It's all right. The table is better than the floor, as I always slept on. Not to mention the disease that spread because of it. Yeah, so many of my friends died because of those darn diseases. Get out! So, later, it took only an hour or two to stitch up Jamie leaving our two heroes to have a good night's rest in the living room of the house. Rest assured, everyone, there was much yelling in those two hours of care. The next day... So now that is over with, I heard that you guys got lost from your Italian. It's battalion. What did you just call me? I'm not talking about you, crazy woman. Yes, you are. Everyone talks about me because I'm so perfect. That's bull. I have not authorized an incarcerate in this household, Paul. Please come with me to the field so I can show you what I need you to do. All right, Melly. It's Melody, not Melly. My name does not rhyme with Smelly. All right, jeez. I heard that for... Now, Paul and Melody head out to the fields so that Paul can begin the work set out before him to earn his keep with Melody at his heels to remind him of his long, hard purpose. Since we set our slaves either off to the war and died or ran away, we need you to work the fields. Why were you even surprised? If you treat someone that bad, they won't ever do a good job. I'm sure if you actually paid them, you would be much better off. Why? It's not like they're actual humans in case of Dred... The case of Dred Scott proved that slaves were only property. And it's exactly that lack of communication that caused this war. I don't care. Please, just get to work in Soldier Boy. And, and this is why there was such a difference between the North and South. No one could ever agree on anything. If people could just talk better, there wouldn't be any need for fighting. I agree, boy. Them there politicians need to learn how to get to speak in their point across. In this way, Paul and Melody began to grow closer, even as Paul labored hard in the fields, working to keep his comrade Jamie in the relative safety of the southern home. You know, Paul, I was thinking about something today. What, Jamie? That you got shot? No. I was thinking that this place is so different from the north where we used to live. True. It is very different. I was talking the other day with one of the sisters, Melody, about how she and Margaret used to keep slaves. I thought, well, that if issues like that and everything else, that and how everything else are different down here, could be resolved, then the war wouldn't even have to be fought. That's really wise, Paul. I never would have thought about that. You know, there's something really, or there's something I really need to tell you. I've got some sweet tea. 
Yeah. Thanks, Melody. But, Jamie, what did you need to tell me? Nothing, just... I wasn't gonna tell you anything. Holy cow, everyone! I was shopping in town when I heard the soldiers would be coming. They're coming to search out Union survivors that might have escaped here. They're going to kill you two, and I wanted to be the one to kill you. Hand over your new weapon, Margaret. I didn't buy any new weapons, I swear. I know there was a sale on daggers today at the market. So please, hand them over! Fine, I'll give them to you. But you have to sleep at some point. What do you mean? The Confederates are coming? Oh yeah, they're coming Wednesday at noon. So we have three days to learn how to blend in. Good job, Paul. You know math. Says the girl who doesn't understand anything about manufacturing. Oh no, you didn't. If you had to raise a farm, you wouldn't have a clue when to plant anything. Yes, we were born in different places, but that doesn't mean we can't get along. Shut, Shut up, up Melody. Melody! Now, as the deadline approaches, Paul and Jamie must learn to act and speak as if they had lived in the South, being taught what to say and how to act so they can pose as relatives of the sisters driven away from their homes by the merciless and terribly bloody war. Sorry, I got carried away again. Plus, we need to work on your voice! Do you mean I have to sing? I can't sing. I'm not a woman. Neither can I. Why do I have to sing like you? No, you just need an accent to change. No offense, but I think Margaret would be better at teaching that to us. This is the first time I agree with them. Who says I can't speak normally? <gasps> Wait, she talked normal to me once before. She never talked normal to me. I'm so jealous. So you only sing by choice? Yeah! Why, you little... Within the time of three days, both Paul and Jamie had both learned how to handle themselves. With a few interesting fights between Margaret and Melody. Now... The only thing left to do was to get rid of any evidence that they had a connection to the Union Army. What they had to do was bury their guns and wonderfully burn all their uniforms. It's a shame to see them go. It kind of feels wrong. It almost feels like our very souls are burning away. Uh, now that that's done, eh? time to go bury the guns, I guess. Hey, Paul. I need to tell you something. What is it, Jamie? I am, uh... Enough! Less talking, more burning. <laughs> <sighs> Let's go, Paul. We have to get those holes dug. Don't you mean I have to get those holes dug? Well, I'll still be there. To give you support, that is. Here's the guns! Now go bury them and make sure they... They do it swell! Wow, are those what your guns look like? So cool. What do you mean, cool? Don't you have guns like these down here? No, none of them look that good. I guess the North has better weapons. Just another difference, I guess. Something that separates us. You know, wars would never be won by whose ideas are better. They'd just be won by whose equipment is better. Their troops, their technology. War doesn't really decide anything. Let's bury the guns, for real. At high noon, Wednesday, the Confederates came, searching for the escaped Union soldiers behind their lines. As they walked up to the big farmhouse, everyone stared in tense silence. We have to search your property for a couple of yanks in this area. A sure kind officer. Go ahead and search the place. But if any of your men, and that includes yourself, touch our food or our cow, I will not hesitate to kill you. Ha ha! That, that Margaret is it's just such a funny one, isn't she? Hmm. So, the soldiers began to search the property, heading into both the house and out into the field, where they come across Paul, tending to a crop patch. Halt! Who are you? I'm just a cousin driven out by them stupid yanks. 
I didn't know Melody and Margaret had cousins. You sure you're really related? Yeah, I'm a distant cousin, but I'm surely related to them. <laughs> Fine. Go about your daily business. You don't happen to have seen any suspicious persons around here. Three days ago, I saw seen two people walking into the barn three properties down. Thanks for the info. We'll be going now. Now, with all of the danger gone and Jamie almost recovered, the now friends gather in the house to discuss the ever-sensitive topic that has been on all their minds. How do you feel, Jamie? I am not happy today. But you look and sound happy. That's true, girl. I'm not a woman. Fine, girl. I don't give up. Oh, and Paul, you didn't call us in here to talk about something? Yeah, I did. I wanted to talk about slavery. Wow, boy! Because slavery is said to be the reason we're fighting this war, but slaves are treated almost as badly in our camps as they are in some places down here. That's so, little boy. Yeah, slaves are hit, yelled at, and given terrible care in the army camps. Whoo, that's terrible. That's pretty much what happens here, right? How did you know? Everybody has heard about how most slaves are treated down here. They don't feel pain, do they? Of course they do. They are human like the rest of us. <gasps> yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll never, never own another, another slave, slave again. again. <laughs> After all of this, the sisters allowed our two heroes, who are now their friends, to stay with them until the end of the war, perhaps even longer. I'm a woman! Will you marry me? Yes!